Everybody, you're very, very welcome. Good afternoon to you all. Welcome from um, Las Bose in Dubai, and I'm here in London. Um, let me just go into some housekeeping. We'll be very short on this. At the end of this webinar, there'll be a few minutes for questions, if you have any. Um, Olas, can you please put up the chat function? And if you yeah. have any questions, please use the chat function to ask any questions. Also, if you would like any other webinars, what webinar themes would you like? And uh, we'd be very grateful for that. And also, if you'd like a copy of these slides, please let us know again in the chat. OK, I'm in London. My name is Niall, Niall Foster. I've been working with Promise uh, for about six years. I represent Promise in the UK and Europe. I work as a resilience consultant, and I really help organizations to change. You'll see from my biography here, I am a D level, which is a board level, and a chief executive level coach and behavioral trainer. I do that as a non-executive director and also working as an interim director. So companies invite me in to help them manage change. And um, I'm going to share some of the experiences I have, and particularly with remote working and with um, this virus, the impact of this pandemic on businesses. And I'm going to share some very simple, simple ideas. My whole philosophy is to keep it short. I am a lover of TED Talks. I don't know if any of you know, what do you think is the duration of a TED Talk? It's about 18 minutes. You know, yesterday I was on a webinar for an hour and a half. It's way too long. And I have eight direct reports, and I'm going to share with you how I work with them remotely. And I have been uh, a remote worker for the last 10 years, because most of my company's work is done with our clients in their offices. So I've been working remotely from our office for about 10 years, and I've been hot desking for that time also. So I'm just going to share some essentials with respect to remote working in a time of change where resilience is really required. Okay, what are some of the things we're going to be talking in this webinar? How or what action should you take to effectively support remote workers? And I'm going to look at this from a manager's or in organizations, whether you're an entrepreneur or running a business, but really from the manager's perspective, but also from the employee's perspective. How do you structure your communications from collaboration? And all I'm gonna say here is be consistent. Don't flip and flop. That's the problem we see. Trust really vanishes if you say one thing one day and you do something else the next. That will never work. You must acknowledge employee distractions, emotions, and the mental health of people. People are very worried. Being locked down is not normal for many people. I'm lucky I'm used to working remotely. A lot of people are not, and a lot of people don't have the apartment. They might live in an apartment. They might not have space for a desk. Where do you work if you're in a lockdown situation? And finally, I'm going to give some advice on managing and keeping strategy and your operational processes on track. Okay, this pandemic, at the end of the day, wherever it is, it's also a huge experiment. And remember, as an experiment, things don't have to be perfect. And the trick is, everyone is in this together. Um, and that's something you must remember. What you are going through, others are going through. So you must use your empathy to relate to people in that way. This is a giant experiment where technology is going to come to the fore. I've been a Zoom, a Zoom re user for about six years. Um, I believe in January they had 10 million user users. Last week they had 300 million users. So technology, we live in a digital age, technology is going to hit us like never before. But the point is, when you're using technology, and when I'm saying here, you know, using technology and the pandemic as an experiment, I think for a lot of companies, working remotely is going to become the norm, particularly when they're going to have to look at their strategy, manage their costs. A lot of organizations might say, we don't need office space. That's a cost that we should not bear, and they're going to ask people to work remotely. 
A lot of companies now do it. Huge numbers of companies do it. And I'm going to say, well, how do you do that really well? So if you are going to move to a using technology in a more uh, daily basis, um, how do you create a dependable culture? You know, remote working may become the new norm. How do you ensure that your employees, if you have an office, and those that are working remotely stay connected? That is the key. Working together. We're all in this together. If people are remote, they must not be out of sight and out of mind. So that's where the technology will come in, and you must use that effectively. I think a lot of organizations have technology, but it's simply not being used effectively. Let me explain. What I'm going to be saying here on this slide is, well, what is the technology that a lot of organizations use or what managers should consider? And basically, you've got to get your online platforms right. And I'm going to say, what are the typical platforms that maybe some of you use? But I'm going to say some of, I'm going to give you also some tips how to use those really well. Look, online platforms that are hugely popular, Google Docs for word processing spreadsheets and presentations. G Suite for collaboration. They're fantastic tools. They cost almost nothing. Monday.com for project management. Dropbox for file sharing. I use Google Drive. Sometimes we use Dropbox with some of my clients. GitHub for engineering. There's a whole load of them. And often you can integrate Google Docs with G Suite and with Dropbox, et cetera, et cetera. But the key point here is, this is essential, Avoid multiple tools for the same purpose in the office. So whatever you are using, get everyone in the office or remotely to use the same tools. It must be easy to sign in from one single account. Let me put it this way. My son, I have a younger son. He is getting, has a new job on Monday. He has to re work remotely. The company have sent him a laptop and he will access their portal, access their online platforms using one single account password. What you must also do is create a webinar, internal webinar or company handbook to train staff on how to use your online platforms. So 30, 45 minute uh, training session online that people can go in and out of to actually how do you complete this form? How do you log on to Google Suite? How do you use monday.com? And basically create a learning curve where you don't have to ask people, but they can go online and get that work. So handbook or online webinars, or internal webinars are essential. And really, I'm saying you may require a VPN. This is a virtual private network. For security, this is the key. Um, we used to talk about being worried about being burgled in our houses. Now it's about being burgled online, being hacked into, um, having our information hacked and stolen. I'm going to suggest that you do use VPNs. And if you have anyone any questions on that, it's very cheap, but it's one of the easiest and best ways to remain secure in a remote environment and in the times within which we are living. If you go down these online platforms, you essentially create an online clubhouse. And that's what your business must become. And that's where your employees know how to connect with each other using Slack, Mattermost, and Discourse, for example. And if you go in and use Slack or Mattermost, they will include Google Docs or G Suite as part of their offering. But create you're creating a clubhouse where people can go and they know what systems and platforms to use and also how to use them. And I just cannot emphasize enough, get a VPN. Use VPN to protect your business, your information and your employees. Remember, working remotely is all about security and also safety, safety, security and safety. Well, this online clubhouse, and what I'm going to be suggesting, you must connect or allow your team members 
to connect at three levels within the business. And they are the team level, the group level, and the company level. And then beyond that, we have the social channels. But let me explain. So connect at three levels. Level one is at the team level. You have a chat function for each team. Might be HR, might be finance, might be engineering or marketing or whatever. And there's also a function where you can give feedback in here. But basically, you create a, a, a level, a connection point um, using the platform where team relationships, team discussions, teamwork, team meetings all get done. So that's at one level. Then you have a group level. So maybe the sales department that has uh, sub departments and post sales or marketing or whatever. Basically, you have a broader department where sub teams can come together. And this is where policy, strategy, projects are discussed. So the team level is kind of directly about with my colleagues and my team manager. The group is who are the stakeholders, who are the colleagues within which within the organization within which we must connect regularly to deliver a consistent service to our customers. So the broader group, so you need a platform for that. And then you have a company. This is where somebody can click on and find out information about what the company is up to, what news is out there, what, um, what, what, um, what updates are there on sales, on projects, on the coronavirus, whatever it is. And you might have an all staff hashtag or a remote help desk hashtag. So these are all online. So I know I go on to all staff. This is company information that everyone should get. I go on to a group ch uh, uh, chat sale. This is for my group department. And then I have the individuals. So each are separate and each are private to those groups. So the, obviously the company one is open to everyone and you may have social channels. So for sports, you know, a lot of companies in the downturn are offering well-being. We do online yoga. Uh, in my company, we do online yoga twice a week. We do breathing exercises. So we have these hashtags. We have music clubs. We have sports clubs. We, the social channels, just one way to coalesce. And please, I put in here as an additional point, make sure that you do all your video conferencing online. And what I mean by that, any meeting in the company, if you are in the office, do it online and you can share the recording with people. I know you might send out an action list after, but do that in-house, so share it for people who cannot attend. Um, and this is the way, I'm, you know, if I'm in a client meeting at three o'clock and there's a company meeting taking place that I cannot attend, I can go online and look at that conference call later. Simple as that. I hope I've been clear there, but all I'm saying is just focus at different levels. And these are the three or four levels with social channels that I recommend companies aspire to. Um, remember, remote working is not a panacea. It is very difficult um, for a lot of people. And you must, as part of our web and our internal webinar offering, we ensure that actually we explain to people, this is our vision, this is our strategy, here are our values. How should you behave when you work remotely? How should you behave if you come into the office one day a week and you work from home or remotely three or four days a week? How should you behave? Um, and we put online courses to emphasize the way that employees should work successfully in order to have chances of promotion. Um, so help people through, particularly now, if they've not been used to remote working, but just explain to them using an internal webinar how they should do that and what they should never do. You know, never assume, never talk about people behind their back. If they have to give information, they use facts and give reasons, et cetera, et cetera. But that must be very clear. A lot of people go off tangent, get lost and get and forget to engage. You've got to keep an eye on that. And I suggest that you have your HR department, if you have one, to follow up with people working remotely at least twice a month, 
just key in, have a phone call, uh, have a, a video conference call to check that everything is okay. And you will notice that things have not, are not okay if deadlines are not met, if people don't join meetings. So keep an eye on that. Don't put up with excuses. I couldn't log on, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to help people to adapt to remote working. And I suggest you create an online training webinar to explain what that is and how to do it. I hope I, hope I haven't gone on too much there. But um, let me go on now on the next slide, Olas, and explain what I do working with my eight uh, team direct reports. Um, and all I'm going to be saying here is, look, you've got to have a defined daily or weekly contact. And that might be face-to-face -face using Zoom or uh, WebEx or whatever. But you've got to have that defined. And everyone's got to know when they are going to communicate with each other or with their manager. They've also got to know when to actually log on to all staff or onto the webinars. And um, make sure that they kind of get updates of new changes. So this is all about keeping the water cooler culture going. You know, keep people talking about the business. But the key point here is you must not micromanage. Uh, and that's very dangerous. Um, encourage staff comment. Encourage staff update. Encourage feedback from staff on how they're getting on. And do emphasize work-life balance. If they are working remotely, make sure they do get, they do get their exercises, et cetera, et cetera. Um, make sure they do take advantage of that and use the time that they might spend traveling into an office well. What do I do? Every Monday morning, I have a telephone call with my direct reports, or I do it online. I and mean, now I do it online. Um, every Monday morning, a quick update. And I, we discuss, I inform them what we're going to be concentrating on that week or the next two weeks. On a Thursday, I have a one-to-one -one with each of my team members, one-to-one -one on the phone or using Zoom or WebEx. And I ask them to give me feedback on how well they're doing, what's good, what's bad, what's frustrating, latest Thursday morning. I want that Wednesday night or Thursday morning so that I can use their feedback in my one-to-one -one with them on a Thursday. And I try to get them, I don't try, they do it. They then do the same with their direct reports. And the idea is we don't want anyone coming up to a weekend. And of course, here it's Monday to Friday. I don't want anyone going away in a weekend feeling worried, feeling disappointed, feeling stressed. So Monday morning, this is what we're planning to do. This is what we need to do this week or next week, and then Thursday for a follow up. Um, you must, as part of this, give updates on events, what's happening with coronavirus, what's happening with contracts, what's happening with the general business. What are benefits from working at home? What are any other new changes, new HR services available to people working remotely? You use this um, kind of manager employee uh, follow up. And the last point there is also to give your direct reports feedback compliment, listen. It's all about listening. Working remotely is about really all about communication. And when I say communication, it's about listening and giving them feedback, making sure they've got everything they need and that they want to talk to you and engage with you. Give them that opportunity. I hope that that has been clear. Now, just very simple. What does remote working mean for employees? And basically, they've got to get into a routine. You know, um, you know um, that routine should be the same wherever possible each day. They need to have a suitable desk. Um, I know a lot of companies that have standing desks here. Well, that's what we use now. But you can't have a standing desk if you're working remotely. Have a desk and have somewhere separate from where you play, you know? So if you can, don't sit in the sitting room, don't stay in your bedroom, if you can at all possibly do that. But the point is, that there are some essentials, maybe a company computer with the high quality internet for obvious reasons, a desk, if at all possible, and I'm saying an ergonomic chair. Um, 
And this is where and part of the webinar that the company may give explain what type of chairs and how to set up remote working and um, give best press practice examples to ensure that people stay safe and well. And um, you find a lot of people get cricks in their neck or they get pains because they're not sitting in the right, uh, uh, you are using the right way to engage with their laptops or their computers. They must also share with their people they're living with in their home, make sure that there is understanding about you must not disturb me and I'm going to give you a signal when you should not disturb me. And I'm a great believer in noise cancelling earphones if you are working in a house with kids or whatever, with others around you, if you haven't got a lot of space. So put the earphones on, that will concentrate your efforts on your work. The whole point about working remotely for employees, agree a schedule, agree your routine, stick to it. Make sure that your bosses know that outside your office hours, you won't be online. Always get dressed, always make time for breakfast, lunch, and breaks. Take time for a walk, do those sort of things, or some sort of sport, exercise, yoga, get a yoga mat, if at all possible. Manage distractions and understand your waves. When you need coffee, if you have a kind of a, a wave, a low point, any time of the day. And the one thing about working remotely for employees, finally, set up coffee meetings online with your teammates and your colleagues. And you must not forget your managers. A lot of people, when they're working remotely, out of sight, out of mind, but have online contact meetings with your bosses. I always say to people, who is our most important customer? Who pays our salary? It is our boss and our boss's boss. I know the customers actually ultimately pay, but you want to keep um, a line of communication open with your manager and your manager's manager to make sure that you are not forgotten. Uh, must, you must manage that. Okay, I'm just coming to the end. I've only got three more slides, but basically I'm coming, how do you keep your strategy on track? Well, I remember the days where we used to have 10 year strategy plans and 20 year strategy plans. Now they are changed two or three times a year. And actually they're gonna be changed every month probably as part of this pandemic. And this is just the norm today. We've just got to get used to that. And what I want to get across here is your customers will empathize with you because they are facing the same crisis. But you've got to communicate transparently with people. Be open, be honest. And uh, you know, nothing is bad. If you say one thing one day and then you change it the next, you've lost credibility. You don't want to do that. But please be honest. And I've just got a few tips Communicate transparently with your customers. We are all in this together. Stay transparent with your customers and explain to them what your business is going through and understand what they are going through. And be transparent with your team members too. You know, be transparent, that's all I can say. Don't flip flop. Maintain a healthy relationship with contracted parties your vendors, your landlords, your suppliers, can you pay them? Give them sufficient notice to be prepared. Do them the courtesy of that and help them as best you can. This will help to reduce bitterness and upset on their side. Communicate with your stakeholders and your boss, as I've mentioned before, make sure you keep those avenues open, check in, few times a month, have a cup of coffee online with them, but keep in contact with your stakeholders. What about your investors? What about um, your customers, your employees, your suppliers? Again, you've just got to have a strategy. How am I going to keep in contact with them? Do I do it in an email? Do I do it online or whatever? But you've got to have a plan. In this virus uh, pandemic, you must track your expenses against revenue, against your sales targets. Um, so revenue, expenses, there's not much that we can control, but you can control your expenses. And uh, actually during the pandemic, 
expenses really haven't been a problem except for your fixed costs. And that's why I think for a lot of companies, moving online or remotely in future will become the norm rather than the exception moving forward. It's one thing that they can control if they don't have to pay office rent. And so make sure you track your expenses against your revenue. Keep an eye on that very clearly. Next point, check the feasibility of your business model. Is it fit for purpose? Keep an eye on those fixed costs and on those variables. What can you control? Cut back. Plan policies for the next three months, nine months, 18 months. You know, what we are doing at the moment is really concentrating on how do we go, how do we use our online presence? Is our website doing enough for us? And um, how can we sell our services online? Can we sell our products online? So we have a strategy for three months, nine months, and 18 months. And I think that's just the norm anyhow, but you've got to reassess all your business assumptions and revisit those. And when I do a strategic plan, again, if somebody wants a copy, it's only on one page. We have eight areas that we monitor, and we monitor those every month, but every three months, nine months, 18 months, we update, particularly now during this pandemic. Be patient in securing investments. Well, where do you get any investments if you need it? Is your bank willing? Do you have venture capitalists? Are there uh, high net worth individuals that you should be engaging with? Um, they're going to want much more information if that's something you have to do. Um, you're going to have to prepare convincing documentation, convincing plans, concrete plans, but you've got to be patient with them. So that might put a stop on getting back into the norm. Here we're pretty lucky. The government has stepped in and are giving companies grants, but that's not the case, the case everywhere. How do you manage employees and manage their optimization? And all I'm saying is, look, morale is a problem. You may want to cut salaries rather than lay staff off. And you can be an example here. Um, cut as much as you can. Um, you can bring it back up later on. But basically, don't just lay off staff. Try to cut salaries, cut costs wherever you can. And that's where I think um, office space is one area that will be impacted going ahead from this. And just keep your team engaged throughout. Keep all your stakeholders engaged. Don't lie. We're all in this together. You've got to be consistent. Once they hear one thing from you one day and something else the next, you'll have problems. And just don't go down that road. If you, at all, you can help it. And the trick is why I have those meetings Monday and Thursday meetings. I want my team members to say exactly what their boss is saying. Consistent messages. Consistent messages from all management within the business is critical. Look, stay or keeping a strategy on track. At the end of the day, you've got to stay safe and help your employees to stay safe and stay healthy. Each employer, each manager has a duty of care and you must be seen to do the best. And you have to be an exemplar in being the best. The best initiatives, and I think a lot of terrible things will come out of this pandemic, but a lot of great things. The best initiatives are often built in times like this. Um, and look, I just wish everybody well, but um, I think a lot will, of good will come from it, but a lot of jobs may be lost in the short term, depending on how long this uh, crisis uh, continues. 31, has anyone got any questions they would like to add to the chat function or ask? If not, that's fine. You're very welcome. I hope I've done you a justice. Yeah, Nayal, there is uh, no questions posted so far. Uh, let me ask you one question. Yeah. Do you think this pandemic will bring in changes in uh, in future workplace strategies? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, invariably. And I think um, digitization will come to the fore. And I think people working, people will realize that you don't have to go to an office. 
Um, okay. Yes, we will share the slides, everybody. Don't worry. But um, I think definitely uh, working remotely will become more normal. I think in the past, people were worried about, well, if I'm out of sight, I'm out of mind. Um, you know, I must be seen to work. But this pandemic has given us a choice. I don't have to be in the office. I can't be in the office. And I think a lot of companies are realizing you can still be as productive, actually even more productive. Because you spend, save so much time on your traveling. Um, yeah, and there's a question there about how you deal with the pandemic uh, depression. Uh, and I think, I think, look, I would put up an internal webinar or talk to your staff and basically say they're not alone. Get them to talk if you can. Get them to talk to someone or to a few group of people. Um, just uh, talking. They're not in this on their own. And I think that's where people create assumptions and start they start to internalize rather than express themselves, get them to express themselves with others. And I think this pandemic remote working will, not for everybody, it doesn't work for everybody in retail, et cetera, et cetera, and hotels. Um, but I think remote working will become much more acceptable. And people will be less nervous about remote working. And what I mean by that is, I think maybe people will work one day a week in the office and maybe potentially four days a week from home. If the systems and the platforms are put in place, if there are different platforms across the company, it won't work. That's why I went on to those early slides. Get your platforms right, get everyone using them, and uh, remote working could be very beneficial long term. But you've got to realize, too, which people like to work on their own and which don't. And then you've got to get them talking on a regular basis with their colleagues. That's where those platforms, the team, the company, and the group really come to their fore. Any other questions? Uh, there is uh, no questions posted. Uh, I, have, I have one more question to ask. Uh, there is a question from Mohammed. I said, how do you increase team motivation? Yeah. Get them talking to get them talking together. Um, team motivation. Look, I know I'm I'm just giving you one-liners here. Um, ask the team what they could do, or what would really help them to improve motivation um, remotely. What would really work for them? It's going to be different for each individual. And the whole point is listen to them and try to use some practical feedback that they give you. So that you just motivation is my manager listening to me and um, um, am i able to get on and do my work am i given feedback motivation is highly personal it's all about feeling noticed you know hello i'm here sort of thing does anyone notice me and that's where the just get a consistent communication uh, plan I just said I have two with my direct reports. Maybe for some new people, it would be more. So maybe you'd have four hits a week. Others, it might be two hits a week. But you've just got to agree what uh, communication hits are required. And that if people join in group meetings online, and it's the same as actually if they're at work, everyone must contribute. No point having everyone online and two or three people not being engaged, not putting, giving feedback, not being asked questions. That's where motivation hits the wall. So I'm sorry, I hope. I uh, Nail, uh, let me ask you one more question. Do you have yeah. any advice for the managers in terms of, you know, implementing flex, remote working flexibility in their organization? Well, I, 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 well, I, I, I think, look, um, and that's what I said earlier on, you know, we're, we've been thrown into this very suddenly and um, we've been all told to uh, keep our distance socially. And um, so that's going to be a problem going back into workplaces in future. So I think this will have a long term impact. And I think companies got to get prepared to work remotely and um, on a regular basis. So maybe you'll have some people working in the office with you know, in name surnames A to A to M one day, and then M to Z the second day. 
I think you've just got to get your policies and procedures in place. Make sure your technology, your online platforms work. Make sure people know exactly what they have to do. So give them online training internal webinars. This is how we're now going to work in a remote environment. This is what you need to do. And I think if you get those messages clearly and you implement them, that will be very beneficial. I hope I've answered your question, Olas. Yes, you, you said it rightly. Yeah, it's clear. I, I don't think it needs to be perfect. It's just we're all learning now as we go ahead. But, um, you know, the point is you've got to work as a team and make sure that the team and the business speak with one voice. And that's where I, that's why I talked about you need to create a dependable culture. Um, so I have the technology, but what is our culture? And what are our values? And I'll be able to express those whether I'm in the office or whether I'm working remotely. And all I would say is whatever you did in the office, just replicate it for those working remotely. And I think it can definitely be done. A lot of companies have been doing it. And I think for a lot of companies, it's going to become the norm. Simple as that. Yeah. As you rightly said, you know, in, 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 uh, in recent days, you know, the HR team is spending a lot of energy and money for uh, managing real estate, you know, yeah. rather than putting more focus on how can we uh, collaboratively work together to achieve a, a common goal and how do we empower our employees and how yeah. can we lower our cost base, you know, mm -hmm. giving additional facilities and flexibilities to the employees. Um, I think, you know, if the people will start thinking in that direction now, especially yeah. when we see this kind of, you know, yeah, epidemic. Now, I think a lot of people are less stressed because they're working from home and they're realizing, well, what things have we been doing that actually have been a waste of our time? And actually, you're going to utilize your time better if it's done well. And I think this idea of HR being more administrative rather than strategic has to change. People won't put up with that anymore. Um, and I think big changes are coming, but it will take time. But changes are coming. Might not always be for the best for everybody, but we're all going to have to get used to it. And that's the great thing about this experiment. We were forced from one day to another. You're in lockdown. You know, I haven't been, I haven't left my, left my home for four weeks. I go out locally in the street, but I haven't been on a train. I haven't been in my car, done nothing. Just work from home. But I have my routine every day and it works very well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I saw, can you read that question there, please? We tried to work remotely for a part of employees, but the productivity dropped down. Even we decided we promoted that. There will be some benefits for that. So well, I, I see, you see, I don't think there should be. I think you want to treat everyone, whether they're in the office or working remotely, the same. Don't think there should be any changes. You know, I think doesn't people have got to get into the mindset. I'm working for. I'm doing my job. It doesn't matter whether I'm doing it remotely, or I'm doing it in the office. And it all depends what you mean by productivity. Um, and what I find is people are measuring often the wrong things. You know, what I mean by that, and I'm being very simplistic here, people stay in the office and actually they do nothing. You know, but the fact that they're there, people assume that they are. Um, I think you can actually generate more productivity if you get the balance right. But it comes down, unfortunately, to the manager's ability to communicate. And productivity should not have gone down. It, no, and you've got to understand why. Did they not have the right tools? Did they not have the right means? What, what happened? Just try to assess what happened and what you could do to improve it. Because it's going to become the norm. It has to become the norm for a lot of companies going forward. Yeah, I think there is uh, no more questions now. Um, OK. OK, uh, look, thank you all for your patience. and. Um, your time this afternoon. Yeah, definitely. thank you very much indeed, everyone. It's been a pleasure.